know, knight on a5, that's the edge of the board, but the advantage is that bishop on b3 can be picked up, and very often that means an imbalanced middle game, which is exactly what Magnus is hoping for. He, of course, wants to score a win with the black pieces in this one, even if it means making a couple of dodgy decisions in the opening just to imbalance the middle game. Magnus, one of the best in the business at doing exactly that. When he wins games with black, we take it for granted that it's easy to generate winning chances uh, from the black side. But so many top grand is to get something incredibly dynamic, tactical, and get an attack going against the world champion's king. He is capable uh, of making mistakes in ultra sharp positions. He's only half human, but the best way to show that he's human is to go after his king. That is advice. <laughs> Speaking well, as a friend, you know. If anybody knows, it's gotta be you. We've all seen those games late at night, early in the morning, all your bullet brawls against Magnus. We're all well aware, Daniel. If anyone has the answer of how to get to him, it would be you and chaos on the board. And it reminds me of this famous saying by Mikhail Dahl about these kind of positions that, you know, you've got to drive your opponent into a deep dark forest where there's a path to get out which is only big enough for one of you. And I think that's where you might have the biggest chance against a player like Magnus. And that's all, where 2 plus 2 equals 5, right? You don't want Magnus to add up the numbers and get a rational result. You want him to start feeling nervous about his ability to handle the complications. But all of that, of course, is it's talk and you have to walk the walk and actually get that kind of position because Magnus is so good at channeling the position into the direction, into the kind of situation that he wants. So what has he done here? He's pushed the pawn to d5, moves the knight back to e8, by the way, knight d7, might have run into e6, so he wants his light to a to control these e squares in the center, and he is telling Carissa, hey, why don't you take my pawn on a7? White takes it with the bishop, that runs into an easy tactic, takes it, bishop c 5 is a fork, but I, I would be seriously considering rook takes a7 if I'm Chris and Paul Magnus' glove. I'm curious what the world champion has in store against rook takes a7. You've got to calculate all these lines where Magnus might trade on a7 and push that pawn to c5, blocking your bishop and potentially trapping it on a7. And Carissa decides to not go for those complications. Instead, she makes sure that she's got control over the center. And these are exactly the kind of chances that you can't miss against Magnus. Knight d3, I still like White's position.
is, I think, losing the thread of this game. It's gone from winning to potentially losing in just a couple of moves. Rook h4, king g1, and rook d1 is not checkmate because white can block with her own rook. But even if Magnus trades and plays king f5 near Tanya, these pawns are looking more menacing than ever. Rook h1 is also possible. Magnus plays just that. He's not missing this chance. I think he's going to go king f5. Carissa, I mean, she will need a perfect, perfect game here with only a minute left. What a shame. How close was Carissa to delivering one of the biggest results of the PCL thus far? What an effort. It's one small bishop move away. That's how far she was. Just from bishop to d6, bishop to e5, with a big threat of rook f6, not only winning the knight, but check beating ideas against Magnus and King. It was missed by her, and now it looks like these pawns are going to be unstoppable. Right now, the c4 pawn is attacked, so you can't really hurry with d3. Five, there's rook d6 check, and then coming back. I think rook f2 and rook takes b2 might win the game, because then if white takes on c4, then the king slides over to d5. This is the same exact thing, because bishop a3, which has been played, runs into d3. And, oh man, I think ignorance is bliss in this case. I think Carissa shouldn't check that game. I think it'll be tougher to recover once you find out how close you were to the to the world champion. You can also believe the fact that you came close to defeating him. There's a lot of positive sure. to take away from that. It was an incredible game really played by her. Start up until this point. Of course, against Magnus, it is difficult to defend these positions. Knight d4, d2, big threat in the air. And with that, Carissa gets frozen the towel. She resigned. Uh, but it doesn't matter for the team result because the guard.